So in the last video, we created a data model called the product and we are going to use this product to create our list. And to save some time, I already create a list of products and going to import this. And we are going to use the product data model to create a list of products. Now we have a list of products and every product is a data model for a product that we already defined here before. Of course, in the real app or in real situation, you will get the data from either a database or an ABI. And let's not talk about this right now. Let's work on our main shopping screen here. So I will add a save area and then a scaffold widget. For this error, Flutter development team prefer to use constant. And if you don't want to use constant, you should read this article because it's very useful to know what's the benefits of constant in Flutter code. For our products, I want to show our products in a grid. So in our body scaffold, I'm going to add a grid view, but I'm not going to use this specific grid view. And instead, I'm going to use another constructor for this grid view, which is grid view dot builder. And let me give you a Flutter tip for you right now. You should know why to use a grid view dot builder and not view grid dot count. And if you don't know the difference between them, check this post in my blog about the difference between them. And don't worry, I post short and easy to read tips in my blog, so I don't waste your time. But if you feel lazy and don't want to read, I will tell you why you should use a grid view to build when you don't know how many items you will show in your view. And this is great for performance also. Because grid view to builder it only renders the items on the screen and don't render anything else beyond of that. And one of the great benefits of using grid view to builder is that it auto generate an index which determine each element of the grid items will be on the screen. And I will show you how to use this index. Of course, grid view to builder needs some arguments and Let's start with item count. This is to inform the grid view how many items will be in the grid. And the items of the grid is going to be equal to the items of the available products in our list. So we are going to use this list length to set the item count. We are going to delete this and this. After that, we are going to add an item builder, which is the function that receives the context and index. The index of the item that will be shown in the grid. And this function returns a widget that will be displayed on the grid. For now, we are going to pass the context and index. And we are going to return our null for now. And the final one and the most important is grid delegate, which defines how your cell is looks like and how your grid will be structured. And I will show you in seconds how we can do this. Grid delegate take something called sliver grid delegate with a fixed cross axis count. This widget required an argument, which a cross axis count, which is the amount of the columns that we are going to use in our grid. And we will need two columns. After that, we are going to use or add child aspect ratio. And in our case, I want to be one by one to be squared so that the grid items to be squared. And of course, the spacing between the rows and the columns. We are going to use cross axis spacing and min axis spacing, and we are going to give it a 10. There is something wrong here. I think there's. This is why I don't want to use constant from the beginning. So let's delete this, and the error is gone. And there is expected something here. Okay, that's nice. After defining the structure of the grid, now we will create the grid items that we are going to return here. But again, there is a quick flutter tip for you. To make your code cleaner and easy for maintenance, you should separate your custom widget to keep your code simple and cleaner. So instead of creating our grid items in the same page, no, we will create a new Dart file in the widget folder here and call it a grid product item. And you can call it any name you want. And this represents our new custom widget that will be created now. We will create a stateless class and call it the same name, importing the material app. Now in the build, we will return something else instead of the container. We will return a grid tile. And it takes a child. And for that, we are going to pass an image.asset, which is going to show a product image. And of course, we won't use one single image for the all products. So we will need to get this image from outside of our widget. And to do this, we will need to add some properties for this class or this widget. And this property will represent our product data. 
So we need an ID or title or the image of the product. So we are gonna to find these three variables here, ID, title, and image URL. And let's use an image and let's add them all to the constructors and make it required because it's required to show one single items or product in the grid. And guess what? There is a quick flutter tips. You can define multiple variable of the same type in one single line. Instead of writing three lines for one for each one, no, we can use it all in one single line. And for now, we are going to take this image and put it here. And before we go to anywhere, we need to set up the assets folder. Now we don't here have any assets, so I'm going to define one assets images inside of it is the images that we are gonna to use and in the box spec we need to do something here I guess you know it. so we gonna to do two spaces and here we gonna to avoid all of this and brace one and two and use assets here the path of the images and don't forget this final slash and up get and wait okay we gonna to use here an image yes we can reach the images now but I'm, instead of using one single image, we are going to get the images later. Now in the item builder, we will return a grid product item for every item in our list here. But how can we use every product in the list to show their data? And this is the beauty of the item builders. It auto generate an index for every item of the grid. And we set before the item count equal to our length of the available products list here. So the item builder will give an index for every grid item, which equal to the indexes of the every product of the list here. Let's see how we are going to use this or create this. So instead of null, we are going to use grid product item. And as you see, it's not identify this widget because it is external widget. So what we are going to do is option enter or just hover the mouse and click import this library pass. And it's going to import it here and the error is gone, but it needs some arguments. So the error is still here. And the argument is the ID and the title of the product and the image of the product and how we can get this data easily by using this list here. And we can access this list because it's inside this class. It's legally to use. So we are gonna to use this available products here and tell him get the index of zero, one or two, but it's going to be automatically by using this index and get the ID of this product. So it's going here in the first index and go to this product and this is also a, not a product, this is an object or a class we have already created before. So we can use the ID by this method. We using this object and instead of this, we access to this product with this method. Okay, take this scope and here we need the title and here we need the image string. And now we returned a grid item or a grid tile for every index in our grid. Till now we didn't talk about provider or state management, but you should understand why you need state management in our application. And I will show you step by step how beginners will build this app or this shopping app and how to improve it to be advanced. Let's run the app and see what we got now. I'm going to use Pfizer to show my screen for you. This is my mobile. Let's make it more beautiful guys. So first we are going to go to material app and delete this debugging banner false. So we can delete this banner here and we need the bar that I told you before here. We're going to go here. So grid tile here, take something called footer. And in the footer, we will use something called grid tile bar. And let's begin a new love story to this widget because it's allow you to add a title and leading icon and a trailing item and you change the background of the bar with very simple steps. Let's add first a title and run. And here we have the title. After that, we are going to add a background autoload. We are going to use in the leading favorite icon. And for the trailing, we are going to use a shopping cart. And of course, for title, we are going to use a style, textile, and that's it for this video. And don't forget to subscribe and go to the next video.